released in 2020, both of these models raised a total of $805,000 from over 1,000 backers on Indiegogo. Now, in 2023, they've been re-released to shake up the market once again. However, while the new Turbo model has certainly made its mark, the Ranger hasn't. Sure, it may sport a suspension system that's extremely rare to find on a scooter of its price, and yes, it can lay claim to one of the longest mileages in its price class, but aside from all of its impressive features, which also include a dual drum braking system, NFC card reader, and turn signals, it's extremely underpowered, making it slow and sluggish. Crucially, if you want the best of both worlds, speed and range, then you'll be much better off opting for the Splatch Turbo Plus. Now, with that being said, it's only fair that I review the Ranger in the same way that I have for every other scooter that I've tested over the last five years. So to kick things off, I'll show you what it has to offer in the design and features department, and then I'll share the results from my hands-on tests. Throughout this section, we'll take a look at the Ranger's cockpit, frame, deck, tires, lights, load bearing capacity, and portability. But before we do that, it's important for you to know that the Ranger is an OEM scooter. OEM stands for Original Equipment Manufacturer, and in this case, the manufacturer is Ningbo VSET Intelligent Technology Co. These guys make a range of scooters for different companies, including Splatch. This is why the Ranger may look familiar to some of you since it shares the same frame as the VSET 8. So while the blueprint of the Ranger's overarching design isn't necessarily unique, Splatch leverages this to its advantage. By using OEM manufacturing, they're able to use economies of scale to sell their scooters at more affordable prices. So with that out of the way, let's dive in and start with one of the Ranger's best assets, its cockpit. Alongside a QSS4 display that lets you track your speed, distance traveled, and battery level, you also get a newly added NFC security scanner. This stops people from turning the scooter on without a pre-programmed card. NFC, otherwise known as Near Field Communication, is the same technology that's used in fob readers to gain access to offices and apartment blocks. With the Ranger, you get three cards, meaning you'll have spares if you lose one. Elsewhere, everything is clean, tidy, and within easy reach of your thumbs and fingers. Take, for instance, the turn signal buttons have been cleverly embedded into the rubber hand grips. Alongside the 24-inch grip-to-grip dimensions, the Ranger promises good handling. In fact, it has the widest handlebars in the sub-$700 class, enshrining it with a sense of control that can't be matched. Building on this is a deck that slams gathered in a grippy coating to keep your feet glued to the platform. The available space meanwhile measures 18 by 5.9 inches with the kick plate adding a further 5 inches. The shallow 17 degree angle of the kick plate makes it comfortable to ride too. The only area of the deck's design that you need to be mindful of is its ground clearance. With just 5.1 inches of space, it's enough of a gap for riding over city streets, but it's too low to roll over curbs. And this brings me on to the tires. As is common on scooters that are destined for everyday use, the Ranger has adopted a varied approach. Leading from the front is an 8.5 inch pneumatic tire that absorbs shocks, while at the rear, you'll find an eight inch solid disc of rubber that ticks the low main maintenance box. You see, rear tires bear more of your weight and as a result are more susceptible to flat. So by using a configuration that mixes the best of both worlds, the Ranger significantly reduces maintenance whilst also benefiting from shock absorbing capabilities. Another area of its design that promises long lasting durability is the IPX5 water resistance rating. The frame is sturdy, well constructed and built to last too. However, while the scooter lays claim to a 265 pounds low bearing capacity, it's important to ask whether this is realistic. Can riders nearing the upper limit successfully ride the Ranger? Based on my tests, 
I would say not. While testing the scooter, I weighed 190 pounds and I found it sloth-like. For optimal performance, I wouldn't exceed 165 pounds. On the topic of weight, it hits the scales at a relatively hefty 45 pounds. You can hoist it on and off public transport without too much aggravation, but good luck carrying it up flights of stairs. That's not to say that it isn't compact though. Thank Thanks to its cantilevered folding mechanism, telescopic stem and foldable handlebars, the entire frame collapses down to a size that makes it easy to store under an office desk or transport in the trunk of a car. It's also worth noting that the telescopic stem allows you to adjust the height of the handlebars. The lowest setting measures just 30.6 inches from the deck, while the highest is 40.3 inches. On the topic of the handlebars, the cuffs that hold the foldable grips in place can occasionally come loose. Here you need to retwist them to tighten everything up but this takes a matter of seconds. It is however a small price to pay since they offer a far more solid foundation than foldable handlebars that rely on spring loaded cuffs. The only improvement in the folding department is if the cantilever mechanism were to have a safety latch. This would add a layer of reassurance for when the stem is locked up upright. Finishing the feature set is a lighting rig that suits the rest of this scooter's sleek matte black and orange aesthetic, but does it have the substance for night rides? In some ways it does and in others it doesn't. A strip light that runs up the stem works in tandem with two deck LEDs to illuminate the front of the scooter, while a couple of lights at the rear double up as flashing brake lights and turn signals. This setup is perfectly adequate for ensuring your visibility to other road users, but what it's not so good at is guaranteeing that you can see them. For riding at night, I suggest buying an extra clip-on headlight. Now, with all of that covered, let's take a look at how the Ranger stacks up in the performance department. With the Ranger's focus on, well, range, its power in the speed department is limited. Equipped with a small 36 volt, 350 watt motor, it has a top speed of 22 miles per hour. And while I managed to reach the claimed top speed, it took an extremely long run to hit it. The size of the motor isn't sufficient for propelling a 45 pound scooter, plus the weight of its rider. By comparison, scooters with the same size motors tend to be a lot lighter. To be precise, they weigh around 31 pounds. This makes the Ranger 45% heavier than similarly powered models. Its poor performance in the speed department becomes even more evident when we compare it to similarly priced rivals. Here, the Ranger's top speed is surpassed by its more powerful siblings, the Splash Turbo and Turbo Plus, both wheeled motors that benefit from 33% more torque and 71% more wattage. Similarly, while the eMove Touring and Horizon models have top speeds that are in a similar field of performance to the Ranger, both of these can call upon more powerful 48 volt, 500 volt motors, meaning they're able to reach their top speeds faster. This brings me on to the Ranger's painstakingly slow acceleration. Measured against 14 other models in its price class, the 7.7 .7 seconds it took to go from zero to 15 miles per hour saw it take the wooden spoon. You can adjust the acceleration strength from one to five via the P settings, but frankly, it won't make much difference. My tests were conducted in the strongest setting and it still came last. Hill climbing isn't its forte either. It simply has no head for heights, struggling on even the gentlest of inclines. There isn't even an optimal gradient that I can give it. So we figured out that the Ranger isn't exactly the most powerful scooter, but surely it performs well in the mileage department. Well, armed with a big 36 volt, 18.2 amp hour battery, it packs a maximum range of 37 miles 
or 24 miles when factoring in real world riding conditions. As a result, it presents itself as an attractive choice. But let's not forget that while it boasts a long range, getting from A to B takes an age. Compared to its 14 rivals, it takes second place behind the Turboant V8. However, because of its sluggish motor, it wouldn't be my top choice for long range rides. Neither would the Turboant V8. Despite having two batteries, one of which is detachable, meaning you can extend its range with spares, its build and ride quality as well as motor power are subpar to the scooter in third place, the Splatch Turbo Plus. I therefore recommend the Turbo Plus if mileage is key to your priorities. Besides, when we dig deeper, its superiority becomes even more clear. Sporting a 48 volt, 15.6 amp hour battery, it stores 14% more energy than the Ranger. Its battery is also 39% larger than that of the Turbo Ant V8, which explains why it comes out victorious when we look at real world performance data. Now the performance report hasn't exactly cast the Ranger in the best light so far, but here's where it begins to claw back some credibility. That's because along with the Turbo, it's the only scooter under $700 to feature swing arm suspension. The swing arms allow for a deep amount of travel, while the springs are well calibrated and don't bottom out. Braking is another area of strength. It's again forging new ground in the sub $700 category by being one of only two scooters, the other being, you guessed it, the Turbo to come with dual drum brakes. The rest rely on single mechanical brakes. Working in tandem with the electronic braking system, the drums bring you to a safe stop from 15 miles per hour in an impressive 2.6 meters. If you find that the braking setup isn't quite working for you, then you can tighten or loosen the drums by twisting the nuts at the end of the brake lines. Additionally, you can adjust the electronic braking strength from zero to two via the P settings. I had it on the strongest setting, which was two. So with that completing the performance report, let me give you a rundown of my final verdict. In my extremely positive review of this Splatch Turbo, I said that it was a worthwhile investment for anyone with a budget of $700. This statement doesn't ring true for the Ranger. Why? Well, the truth of the matter is that in sacrificing motor power, Splatch has tempered the Ranger's value. It lacks zip and it's monotonous to ride, especially for long stints, which is a shame as it's touted as a long range model. For this reason, you'll be much better off opting for either the Splash Turbo, Turbo Plus or the Horizon 13. But before we get into those, let me give you a quick recap of the Ranger's pros and cons. For the pros, it has a dual swing arm suspension system that's rare in its price category, responsive dual drum brakes that outperform its competitors, it's exceptionally nimble, has a compact folded frame, height adjustable handlebars, an NFC security system to unlock the scooter, it's low maintenance and it has an IPX5 water resistance rating. Cons include, it's underpowered making it slow and sluggish, it's terrible at climbing hills and while the lighting rig certainly looks cool it doesn't provide enough illumination for night rides now let's take a look at those alternatives if you liked what the ranger had to offer in the way of its design and features but wish it had a more well-rounded performance profile then the splash turbo would be a wise choice not only does it cost the same but it benefits from a significantly more powerful 48 volt 600 watt motor, a 6 miles per hour faster top speed and a 44% quicker acceleration rate. You do however have to sacrifice some range with a smaller battery that puts out 15 fewer miles. There is a solution to this though and that comes in the form of the Splatch 
Turbo Plus. It shares all of the benefits of the Turbo, including its more powerful motor, faster top speed, and quicker acceleration rate, but it also brings a larger battery to the party. Compared to the Ranger, its battery is 14% bigger, equating to a longer real-world range. For me, this scooter offers excellent value. Then there's the Horizon. Now, aside from being backed by Fluid Freeride's excellent support and service commitment, it has a more powerful 48 volt 500 watt motor and a 39% quicker acceleration rate. It's also three pounds lighter and 9% more compact when folded, but it costs more, has weaker brakes, and it doesn't have a water resistance rating, turn signals, or an NFC system. The maximum deck to handlebar height is slightly shorter, meaning it's not as well suited to tall riders either. Now, to find out more about any of these alternatives or the Splash Ranger, you know what to do, click on the links in the description. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.